Emmy Rossum and Slow Me Down. Talagang kung papahinggan mo yung music na yun, you really will tend to slow down. No? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> the hanging question earlier was um, uh, Philippine bar examination and uh, the New York... Uh, anong pinagkaiba nung New York tsaka yung Philippine bar? Well, uh, the Philippine bar, uh, I would say it's more focused on essays, mm-hmm. at least during my time. Mm-hmm. Although at my time, there was already some initiative to try to move it to multiple choice questions. So, uh-huh. But during my time, there multiple choice, but then they still require you to explain. So I guess, mm-hmm. obviously, there was a lot of hesitation to have more multiple choice questions. Mm-hmm. And uh, for the New York bar, mm-hmm. I think they have the whole system down path to a science meaning mm-hmm. um, if you look at their multiple choice questions the way they're drafted it's really good in a sense that it is difficult for someone who is not knowledgeable of the law but it is not confusing and it's a good gauge of knowledge because I think more than the, the examinees mm-hmm. um, it's also a test of how good the people crafting mm-hmm. the questions are mm-hmm. and I think to that extent, medyo behind pa tong Philippine bar. Mm-hmm. Kasi when we tried to shift to multiple choice questions, when there were 80% more mm-hmm. multiple choice questions opposed, mm-hmm. as opposed to the essay, mas mababa yung passing rate. Uh-huh. Uh, yun yung isang controversial, mm-hmm. I think it was like about two, three years ago, na uh-huh. sobrang baba ng passing rate. Mm-hmm. They had to adjust it. Hindi pa sanay. Mm-hmm. But um, interestingly, when I uh, took the New York bar, I thought it was going to be much easier because mer- two days straight siya eh. uh-huh. Hindi katulad sa atin, uh, it's four Sundays in a month, pero ev- after a whole day of uh, examination, makakapahinga ka the next day because the next one would be a week after. Uh-huh. Sa New York kasi, two straight days. And then, ang nakahiwalay lang would be the day na you take the legal ethics mm-hmm. exam. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought it was going to be easy for me because the first day is mostly... Uh, essays mm-hmm. and then next day is all multiple choice mm-hmm. but actually it's the multiple choice that's very difficult mm-hmm. so uh, and that also has a component on the federal federal law mm-hmm. so New York New, mm-hmm. uh, so meron kang New York na, taga, na New York lang and then mul- what they call the multi-state bar exam oh, the, oh. questions which means yung federal law the, kasi the may mga differences yan kaya minsan pag nag-review ka uh, when it comes to crimes, for instance, iba yung rules na New York specific and iba rin yung mga elements when you're talking about an offense, na federal offense. So how's that? So how's that? If, if, if you're a person who commits a crime in New York City or you're a New Yorker and um, you go to L.A. and then you commit a crime in L.A., uh, you have to get a lawyer in L.A. Uh, you will be tried uh, it, because they're also territorial. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you will be tried in LA, and uh, it, so in that sense, you need to get a lawyer that is licensed to practice in California. Ah. But that's why you have also federal law because mm-hmm. that's why if you see signs sometimes it says mm-hmm. it's a federal offense because mm-hmm. that means federal law will apply not just mm-hmm. the local laws per state. Mm-hmm. How does it happen, for example, sorry, mga lawyer, oh, mga legal mga, na tuwes naman? Yung mga iba, oh no, nakaka-antok na yung podcast. Then, I'm just kidding. And then, and then, and then, yeah. na, na-imagine ko si Imelda Marcos, mm-hmm. yung mga Marcos cases, yeah, di ba, oh. na um, tried in the United States. Um, is, is this the reason why she had to hire a lawyer in the States? I, th- I think it was Spencer, the lawyer, a mm-hmm. uh, lawyer in the United States to represent her. Mm-hmm. Or, or pwede rin Pilipino from the Philippines to represent her or the government? Well, it depends because uh, what offense they're trying. Uh-huh. Because I guess what makes the Marcos cases, what makes those cases peculiar would be uh, the fact that uh, some of them involve, uh, of course, mm-hmm. either graphing corruption charges mm-hmm. or uh, what you would call extraditable mm-hmm. offenses, meaning they can be extradited back to the Philippines so mm-hmm. they can be tried here. Mm-hmm. Although in that case... Um, I think uh, there are components of ill-gotten wealth that the jurisdiction can be 
had in the US mm-hmm. kasi lalo na kung merong mga assets that mm-hmm. are located in the US. Okay. So it's, Okay, it's getting oh, more boring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, basically, long and short, sometimes kailangan mo ng lawyers abroad, sometimes uh-huh. kailangan. So merong ito. so merong cases na pwede yung lawyer mm-hmm. ng Pilipinas mag-represent uh-huh. sa in Zurich or whatever, and so, meron din mga kaso na kailangan lang talaga yung mga abogado lang doon. Oo, uh-huh. but uh, uh-huh. yeah, depende uh-huh. talaga right. sa court depends. kasi may courts na bawal mag-appear ang foreigners katulad ng Philippines. So how long how, how long did you or did you have to study again in New York uh, law just to be able to take the, the New, New York, York bar? Yeah, oh, oh. Um, uh-huh. so I I studied in Harvard Law School and that's a masters of law program mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean that you'll be prepared to take the New York bar just mm-hmm. because you take a masters of law. That's yeah. a separate mm-hmm. uh kailangan mo mag-aral pa ulit ng Grabe. what they call a New York bar review uh-huh. because you really study all the materials that you need uh-huh. to take the New York bar. And how long is that uh, mm, studying? It's, uh, that's why I said parang mas efficient yung system sa US because in the Philippines, you have to take, of course, the whole um, uh-huh. four years in law school uh-huh. and then um, bar review. But there, uh, you would... I started siguro March yung nakalagay na timetable na ideal is uh-huh. March, April, May and then the exam is uh, April, June. It's like it's like full uh three months of, of review. Yes. Uh and then it overlaps with your semester because we don't graduate until mga April. Now it makes sense. Um Kumusta si Leonardo DiCaprio? Sa Catch me if you can. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Ang galing. At siya umaamba siya. No? Yeah, Going. that's true. Uh, anyhow, um, I love that movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. Which is yeah. ironic because you have yeah. other uh, great figures in history. Like, uh-huh. I think Hillary Clinton did not pass the first oh. time she took the bar mm. exam in the US. And then you have also... Um, JFK Jr. who mm. had to take it twice I, uh, or maybe failed it twice by uh, yeah. uh, well sa atin naman si Claro M. Recto diba? okay so how about uh, tell us about your Harvard experience I really had a lot of fun in mm. Harvard because mm. I think apart from just being in the class you mm. have a lot of learning experiences outside of the classroom mm. and I think you know the yung mga um, lunch lunch how do they call that again? Um, lunchbox talks. Like basically, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they invite people. Like for instance, I've met in mm-hmm. person um, the COO for the whole world of JP Morgan because wow. he used to be, uh, he's also a Harvard Law School graduate. Mm-hmm. So you meet those types of people Galang. that instead of just spending your lunch mm-hmm. chatting with your friends mm-hmm. or your normal lunch lang, you meet all of these people that are exceptional Galang. in different mm-hmm. fields. And I'm one of the also memorable experiences I've had was meeting Dana White in mm-hmm. Harvard Business mm-hmm. School because mm-hmm. Dana White is the president of uh, UFC, Ultimate mm-hmm. Fighting mm-hmm. Champion. And mm-hmm. um, I'm an MMA fan. Oh. I, I really like watching MMA and, and UFC. Too. And I tried it as a sport, I as a it, cardio exercise. I know, I saw it in one of your photos. <laughs> mm, I, I've oh. done Muay Thai and boxing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was really a good experience to meet that type of person because mm-hmm. it, it was among a few group of people uh, uh-huh. and Dana White was sharing to us that actually at some point he was a doorman in yeah. Boston yeah. before he pu- uh, was he joined UFC. Yeah, yeah. sa Kennedy School, diba? Meron din mga ganun ganun mm. na parang, may, parang meron TED Talks dun sa canteen nila. Diba? Yeah. Parang, parang salita. Uh, wow, I mean, I've great experience. I, I only, I was only there for six weeks but I did have a grand time. Yeah, you uh, should mm-hmm. go back. And then oh, they tell me to go. They, they, they <laughs> asked me to. I think the school was was sending me emails to take up this uh, public administration mid career something. Yeah. You know. Oh, like, if I uh, had time, I want to go back. Me too. Oh, oh. and then oh. the, the funny thing is, mm-hmm. Kanina, you asked why uh, I didn't take my, that uh, Fulbright scholarship. Oh yes, yeah. Because oh. it overlap sha because the time that I was supposed to. Um, when I decided mm-hmm. the year I was going to apply for a master's of law abroad, mm-hmm. um, I had to go on a trip with my whole family abroad because that is one of my fam- our family traditions because both mm-hmm. my parents are busy. Nga. Mm-hmm. Growing up, um, I would hardly see them on weekdays because they were always late. Umu- uwe. Pag mm-hmm. umaga naman kami na papasok sa school. So summers, they'd make it a point that mm-hmm. we'd go abroad for a month 
minsan two months mm-hmm. uh, somewhere ab- like US or ano somewhere na malamig uh-huh. but then um that time uh, I was already uh, working as a lawyer but we kept that tradition mm-hmm. so we were abroad by the time I got back na miss ko na yung deadline for submitting a Fulbright oh. application but then it was that year normally December yan yun yung deadline for applying sa mga masters of law program mm-hmm. abroad so I decided to still submit my application and my dad was a little skeptical about me taking masters of law abroad because by then I already had a an American boyfriend. So, sinasabi uh-huh. niya, siguro pag uh, nag-aral ko, siguro baka gusto mo na mag-stay doon. And they're very mm. nationalistic, both my parents. Mm. So, they would prefer that I'm here Mm-mm. in the Philippines. Mm. So, it's kind of weird setup, no? Mm. But anyway, we'll, let's talk about that so, later. So, yeah. uh, mm. what happened was, I, and so my dad said, you can only study abroad pag pumasa ka sa Harvard Law School wow. or Columbia, pwede na. Pero sabi, so I only applied in Harvard and Columbia University uh-huh. in, uh-huh. uh, in New York. So, sabi ko, okay, what are the chances, di ba? Ang, ang slim. So, I was thinking, in any case, at least if I get rejected, um, the next round, pag mag-apply ako ng Fulbright Scholarship mm-hmm. and mabigay naman, then I have scholarship for a, mm-hmm. for, for a school. So, mm-hmm. I applied in Harvard first and Columbia. And then, the the following year, applied for Fulbright Scholarship, uh-huh. which was uh, earlier the following year. Mm-hmm. And then, I got the results for Harvard and Columbia, which I both passed. Mm-hmm. And then one, uh, when I was already leaving for uh, the U.S., uh, they did an interview na dapat in person uh-huh. for Fulbright Here because I was in the finalists. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they said I had to do it in person. But I, at the time, I was in the U.S. for a wedding. And I said, I, I really can't because how can I fly home just mm-hmm. for the interview? So was it like so, you were one of the bridesmaids? Yeah, I can't. Uh, yeah, so I was, uh, I was, really, oh, okay. but I did the interview on uh, a call and uh-huh. dahil sa time zone difference, parang hilo hilo pa ako uh, while doing the uh, interview uh, and I was the one who only did it on a telephone conference so I was thinking, ay nako, uh, I'm sure parang hindi na nila ako i-consider, but then, um, and then I had to go to the US and start school na, so, uh-huh. But after the first week in, of being in Harvard Law School, I got a call and said I got the Fulbright Scholarship. Wow. And then I said, "Pwede mong i-apply ko na for this year wow. because I'm already here in Harvard." Yeah. And they what told they me, uh, "No, because they're very strict because they already have scholars for this year, so ah. you can get the full scholarship, not full tuition and uh, board and lodging, but that's gonna be next year." Uh-huh. So they said, "What you can do is uh, defer and then come home oh, to okay. the Philippines and then one year." So I talked to my mom. Sabi ko, because I was also uh, as a matter of sayang uh, din yun. Oh, gusto ko sana na sayang dollars. Na yung, oh, <laughs> so I was telling then my mom because I was spending some of my own money because I wanted to do it for myself, uh-huh. na to show that I did something mm. na sarili kong pagod and hirap de So I was. Think, tempted to go home because mm. I was like, I'm going to go home. But then uh, mm. my mom said, But Karen, what for? At this stage, you're buying time because if mm. you come home, uh, will it add anything to your skill set mm. to do the same work you've been doing for the law firm? And then, so mo, my mom today is a good mentor. She told me, <laughs> Unless you have, uh, you know that it will add to your um, growth and experience, then come home. But mm. at the end of the day, that's just money. So uh-huh. if if you think that now is the time to do your masters, just stay there. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I declined, and they said it's okay. You can oh, reapply now, and if you can, you know. Hi, yeah. kaya pala no. Mm-hmm. Sayang yun. Sayang dollars. Kung yun sayang dollars. Oh, ay asigay dito tayo sa um, pangalawang ano mo uh, chapter na pangalawa. Grade school, high school, college law fifth chapter of your life. You became an instant celebrity when you were appointed the spokesperson of CJ Corona. No? How was this decided? You mean the... Ah, na, the being na, part of this... Being a yeah, spokesperson. Yeah, na ikaw na yung... Kasi, Uh-oh. alam ko, for the first few days, iba pa eh. Tapos, da, bigla naging ikaw and then all of us in the media, ah, dapat siya na. Mm. But how was this decided? Uh, this is something mm. I did not foresee because... Mm. Uh, at that time, I I was working for Kisumbing Torres Law Firm, which mm-hmm. is kind of uh, also known as Baker McKenzie Manila. But mm-hmm. then, um, I was already engaged uh, mm-hmm. to be married. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 
because uh, I was I also went to Europe. Mm-hmm. I did mention Karina Martin. I mm-hmm. took some flying classes oh when I was goodness. still living in the US. <laughs> the first single engine. <laughs> single engine. Single engine. Like, so, uh, by the time, umalis pa ako, in spite of the fact that I was already getting married by mm-hmm. December, I went to Europe and then flew a little in uh, Germany and then uh-huh. pagbalik ko, mga three weeks na lang before my wedding. So, uh-huh. parang I was cramming. Uh, so, I, I actually resigned from my, my job. Uh-huh. Uh, not just because of the wedding, but I decided kasi that uh, the partnership track in a big law firm was not for me. Uh-huh. I, I don't believe in chasing after billable hours, which is uh-huh. really the business model for big law firms. Uh-huh. So, I was thinking, I want something more meaningful where I could see the direct uh, mm. the direct uh, contribution I would have in society. I know it sounds very idealistic, pero at some point, kasi yun yung, I guess, hahanapin mo rin. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, so I resigned without thinking of what I'll do next. And ironically, a week after, wala pang one week since I resigned, biglang may tumawag sa akin from the staff of uh, former Chief Justice Corona asking me if I would be interested in becoming... The, one of a member of the legal team and the spokesperson uh-huh. for the impeachment mm-hmm. and uh at that time uh, i was really skeptical na may parang alam me if you're panicking for your wedding and yes. then my my parents in law already flew in by that time from the us mm-hmm. inaasikaso ko pa sila mm-hmm. ang immediate reaction ko was ay naku wala akong time for that uh-huh. but then uh, i didn't know at that time that my mom had already declined the position so siya yung first choice pala ni uh-huh ni CJ Corona mm-hmm. because uh, my mom by then had already written a bench and bar book uh, was among other with along with other justices of the Supreme Court and she was also one of the group uh, a member of the group that revised our special civil actions oh so God. rules of court on the special God. civil yeah. actions so she would have been a good spokesperson mm-hmm. sana but then she was very busy mm-hmm. so she declined busy for the wedding oh you mean because hindi even ko lang sa wedding planner uh, but then um, buti lang wedding planner oh siya yung, siya yung yeah hero. ang joke namin diyan mm-hmm. ang nagpakasal talaga yung wedding planner uh-huh. tsaka yung executive assistant ng uh-huh. husband ko because we were both too busy magaling to... yung wedding planner ano pangalan yes. niya Marisha Ligon but she's uh-huh. used to absentee uh uh, absent Planning. couples kasi <laughs> oh, siya rin pala yung kay Rufa uh, Gutierrez and Ilmas oh, nung time mm, na they were abroad mm. dumating na lang yung dalawa para magpakasal na y- y- yung wedding mo dito sa Pilipinas? dito uh, okay yes. alright so oh, oh. while 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 we were interviewing you before during the the corona trial you were already married then? or yes oh, okay mm-hmm. oh, kasi yung uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. when I decided finally to say yes kasi my mm-hmm. my husband I think is he really thinks mm-hmm. uh, along the lines of yung, I, I guess, an American in a sense mm-hmm. na tayo kasi Filipinos, we tend to base our decisions on personalities. Mm-hmm. So, if, for instance, CJ Corona would have been a very close family friend, siguro kahit gano'n ako kabisi, sasabihin ko agad na, o oh, sige, tignan ko yung case or pag-isipan mm-hmm. ko. But at that time, um, we, I wasn't really a family friend of CJ Corona. I hardly knew him. So, my initial reaction was, I have no time for this, but then um, I even said that's my husband's name. Who's uh, at that time my fiance? He was saying, uh, "Well, how can you say no? You don't even know the merits of the case. You're, you're, when you're asked, uh, it sounds very petty that you're saying no to a national issue mm-hmm. without even knowing why." Exactly. So I read it. History. The, yeah. It's part of history. So. Yeah, in hindsight, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but at that time, no, parang iniisip ko lang, nako, mm-hmm. ba, hindi pa ako na ready for my mm-hmm. wedding. So I was, I read the complaint, which was already, uh, which was what was passed uh-huh. by the Congress as an impeachment. And then I read the draft answer, uh, which I found very convincing because I found several of the grounds to be non-impeachable, particularly yung meron dong article of impeachment on mid, being a midnight appointment. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that uh, would be ironic, actually, because when I was teaching in UP Law School as a member of their faculty, I was one of the professors that signed that, uh, uh, what you call a petition. Asking, midnight appointment. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Te- basically telling the president at that time, President GMA, that 
uh, don't make the appointment because this is a midnight appointment. Mm -hmm. But later on, the Supreme Court, without CJ Corona, obviously, because he's uh, conflicted in the interest, mm -hmm. the Supreme Court um, came out with a decision saying that it was not a midnight appointment because that provision only applies to the executive branch. Mm -hmm. So basically, when you say na a, a constitutional appointment, that can't be an impeachable offense mm -hmm. because that's just conflicting, diba? Right? And of course, the decision stands. So mm -hmm. you can't make it into an impeachable offense apart from the other grounds which mm -hmm. I found baseless, yung mga flip-flopping decisions. Kunwari, it's mm -hmm. not an impeachable offense eh, under constitution. So I was very convinced that it had no leg to stand on and it's once you open your eyes to something like that, it's hard mm -hmm. to close it again and say na I don't care. So mm -hmm. I really I decided to be part of the team. And now you are the spokesperson, the head of the media for the Yolanda rehabilitation uh, effort. Another controversial position. Parang Actually, Martin, even before I was asked to join this, uh, the Presidential Assistant for Rehabilitation Recovery, uh -huh. I was getting, I got some uh, offers as well to either be the lawyer for and or lawyer slash spokesperson for other controversial issues as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, maraming uh, issues yan, including some government Uh -oh. officials and some even private corporations and na nagkakaroon ng national uh, how do you say mm -hmm. uh, nagkakaroon ng crisis uh -huh. publicity crisis uh -huh. but I would say no so one of my rules of thumb talaga is regardless of how pro high profile a case or an issue is I would not say yes un unless I believe in the cause mm -hmm. so when um, I was actually in the U.S. at that time because Diba Yolanda happened November and then I had to go to the U.S. December up until January. So I got uh, a, a message from someone in the Philippines mm -hmm. asking me if I would, have, I would be interested to work with Senator Lacson in the position of a... Uh, As, as his as the presidential assistant for rehabilitation and recovery mm -hmm. because he was appointed around December mm -hmm. and I said well, let's talk about it when I get home and then as soon as I arrived the day I arrived I had meeting si Senator Lacson uh -huh. and I believe in the cause because for me it's not even about politics eh. Parang you disregard all of that it's uh -huh. all about making sure that these people can be get, go back to one normalcy mm -hmm. but second that we raise yung pre Yolanda dem demographics meaning you make their lives better kasi mm -hmm. yung areas na tinamaan ng Yolanda a lot of them uh, were really some of the poorest areas in the mm -hmm. Philippines in mm -hmm. fact if you look at their uh, poverty rate mas mataas eh, than Metro Manila well, fifth class the municipality mm -hmm. you know. I think we're running out of time, but um, I have a few more questions. It's just going to be fast. Uh, tell us about McBride. Who is Mr. McBride? Uh, what, what are the personal lessons also learned from the impeachment trial of CJ Corona? And, uh, the, of course, your job now as, uh, as, one, uh, as the main spokesperson of the y Yolanda rehabilitation effort. Uh, let's play one more song, and then let's get to that. And uh, you can get on with your newscast. <laughs> Brooke White Yellow. What makes the version of Brooke White your favorite? I like Coldplay mm -hmm. uh, Yellow, the song per se. Mm -hmm. And I will explain later why. Because it's maganda mm -hmm. talaga yung, maganda <laughs> yung uh, meaning niya. But uh, for me, uh, I think the way Brooke White sings it uh, brings out the beauty of the song more. Mm -hmm. Because of the one, the pace and her voice. Okay, let's uh, play this. We're quite yellow. We'll be back with Karen Jimeno. Don't go away. <laughs> 